the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. It is a joy to welcome you to St. Paul's Cathedral on this, the last Sunday after Pentecost, as we celebrate the reign of Christ the King. Please be seated for a few announcements. A warm welcome to those of you who are visiting and those of you who are joining us online. Thank you to the cathedral staff and volunteers who continue to work hard to prepare this sacred space for in-person worship and keeping everyone safe. Please call the dean or the church office if you have any questions or concerns and, and continue to stay in touch. We continue to be responsive and as responsible as possible during, this, during these anxious days. Thank you for your patience as we continue to adjust and work through our, co our AMBER stage protocols. This is a service of Holy Eucharist. At communion time, we will come to you, so please remain in your assigned seats. And at the, at the end of the service, the wardens will dismiss you from the front, out the south transept, by row D, C, B, and then A. And please keep social distance as you're exiting the building. Thank you again. Our worship continues with our colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord and King, Grant that the peoples of the earth, now divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his gentle and loving rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will scatter them out. Let me begin again. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. 
He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the states, among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put sheep at the right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them. Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. And he will say to those at his left hand, You are cursed. Depart from me into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. 
I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. May only the truth be spoken, only the truth heard and understood in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints. This week, the fourth season of The Crown was released that made-for-TV series which chronicles the life and family of Queen Elizabeth II. I haven't kept up with the series beyond the first season, the focus of which was primarily on Elizabeth's ascension to the throne at the age of 25 and the early years of her marriage to Prince Philip. Those were indeed challenging times for the young couple having been thrust into their roles as queen and consort. The show portrayed that it was especially hard for Philip, who was quoted as saying, am I to be the only man in the country whose wife and children have not taken my name? Perhaps the most telling quote, whether it's factual or not, is uttered by the Duke of Edinburgh in anger and absolute frustration when he said, I am currently outranked by my eight-year-old son. Ego is a big thing. It's a very human thing. In the right balance, it is necessary for our well-being and certainly for our self-esteem. Out of balance, however, it can be calamitous, as we have witnessed in the current political crisis in the U.S. But the chaos that we have witnessed being played out in Washington is but one example in the long storied history of God's people, a history in which those whose ego has been allowed to run amok seize power and control which they then use to the detriment of those under them, and most always for the sole purpose of maintaining and perpetuating that power and control. God, speaking through the prophetic voice of Ezekiel, calls out those Babylonian kings who were abusing those under their authority, and most especially those now living in exile. Although Ezekiel uses the term shepherd, we understand and interpret it to mean king. Those who have been abused, Ezekiel writes, God, the shepherd, the king, will gather and feed, heal 
and strengthen. And the evil kings, those that he names the fat and the strong, I will destroy, God says. I will feed them with justice. These prophetic words are echoed in Matthew's gospel, as we heard Pat offer it this morning. The sheep, cared for, restored. The goats, the goats receive eternal punishment. The two passages mirror one another. They are similar in so many ways, perhaps with one notable exception. In the Old Testament passage, the prophetic words of Ezekiel, God, the king, is doing the gathering, the feeding, the healing. Whereas in Matthew's gospel, it is the sheep who are doing the kingdom work. Here again, Jesus' invitation. Come, you that are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Inherit the kingdom. A kingdom, a realm in which none of us are outranked. For this kingdom isn't about ego. This kingdom isn't about entitlement, and it certainly isn't about accumulation. As inheritors of the reign of Christ, this realm demands of us that we gather, and feed, heal, and strengthen all who are in our midst, regardless of age or gender, race or color, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, indigenous or settler. This past week marked Transgender Awareness Week, a time when we recognize and affirm those persons who have a gender identity or expression that differs from the sex they were assigned at birth. And while perhaps not all of us certainly can relate, we are called to encourage and to celebrate those in our midst who, like us, have been created in the likeness and image of God, the God who loves us all and wants nothing more than for us to love those around us. And therein, therein lies the beauty of this realm, the reign of Christ. For you and I are inheritors. We are invited, as Paul reminds us, with the eyes of our heart enlightened and empowered by God's Spirit to do the work of the kingdom. As hard, as troubling, as frightening as that often can seem. And so as we draw this church year to its conclusion on this last Sunday of Pentecost, as we look ahead to those days of waiting to celebrate anew the incarnation of the one who came to be the light of the world, we know as inheritors of that kingdom that we too are to be light. And so let me leave you once again with this prayer that I have left you with a few times now this fall from the work of L. R. Nost, an award-winning author and social justice activist. As we celebrate that we are indeed inheritors of the reign of Christ and that we have been called to be light and to do the kingdom work, I pray that you will not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. All things break and all things can be mended. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go. Love intentionally, extravagantly, unconditionally. For the world, the broken world, waits in darkness for the light that is you. And I speak to you this day in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In a posture you find most prayerful, let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. The Lord grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General and Prime Minister, the G20 leaders, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the sick in long-term care and those on our intercession list, Christina, Pansy, Roland and family, Ethan and Sarah, Mary, John, Jamie and Mavie, Chandra and family, Maisie, Scotty and Dottie, Eve and Bill, Debbie, Gemma and family, Helen, for those suffering from the coronavirus and for those caring for them, and for those businesses and churches in shutdown during this pandemic. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Lord, in your mercy. On this day on which we remember those who identify as being transgendered, let us pray for those who are discerning those who have been victims, and those who live in fear. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Lord, in your mercy. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. The The Lord direct our lives and the lives of the newly ordained in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for all who have died, remembering Anna. Rest eternal, grant unto Anna, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her and all the faithful who departed. And let us pray for all who knew and loved her, most especially the Reverend Andreas, Theo, and family. May the Lord grant them peace. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to please stand. My sisters and brothers in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Keeping social distance, I invite you to share that peace with one another. Eternal God, by your grace, you have raised us up and enthroned us with Christ in the heavenly realms. Receive all we offer you this day and lead us in those good works for which you have created us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. You exalted him as Lord of all creation, that he might present to you an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. Therefore, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow as heaven and earth proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. 
In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand in your presence. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us a royal priesthood in the kingdom of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Make known his victory through us, we pray, that all the world may see his light. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Be the church to those who are thirsty, to those who are hungry, to those who are sick, to those who are alone, to those who are in prison, to those who need us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, do the work of the kingdom as you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.